Yo, 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 what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Adam Moose, and today we're going to be continuing our series called In Depth. This video is going to be a season 11 in depth guide on Volley Bear Jungle. I feast on your heart. In this series, we'll be going over the difference between an average Volley Bear player and a great one. We'll be covering his abilities, combos, runes, items, jungle clear, strengths, weaknesses, and some final tips and tricks to take your Volley Bear game to the next level. If you do enjoy this video, it would really help me out if you could leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll be uploading high quality jungle content on the daily, so be sure not to miss out. If you want to join the community to talk with other players looking to improve, join the Discord link in the description. Hope you guys can learn something. Enjoy the video. Abilities. Volley Bear's passive is called the Relentless Storm. This passive grants volley bonus attack speed for every auto attack or ability used. When maxed out, his attacks cause a chain lightning that deals magic damage to nearby enemies. This passive is pretty cool and also very useful. The AoE damage and attack speed is perfect to speed up your jungle clear and can also be a game changer in early game skirmishes. Volley Bear's Q is called Thundering Smash. Volley charges towards an enemy, gaining bonus movement speed and stunning the target. Keep in mind that the bonus move speed is doubled when going towards enemies, so it's very important to have your Q cooldown ready when looking to gank or make a play. Your Q is also an auto attack reset, which you usually want to be using while clearing to increase your clear speed. Volley Bear's W is called Frenzied Maul. Volley Bear mauls the enemy dealing physical damage and marking them. If this ability is used on a marked target, it also heals you based on your missing health. This is your main DPS and sustain in the jungle. It's also important to keep in mind who you've already marked to ensure that you get the heal in teamfights. Your W is also an auto attack reset along with your Q. Making use of both of these auto resets will greatly increase your clear speed. Volley Bear's E is called Sky Splitter. Volley Bear summons a lightning bolt at a target location, dealing damage and slowing enemies after a short delay. If you're standing in the blast radius, you also gain a shield. This ability is extremely powerful if landed, since you deal damage, slow, and gain a shield. The problem is that it's easily dodged away from. Using your E before stunning a target with your Q is a great way to ensure that it lands. With enough practice, using the EQ flash combo is a way to almost guarantee that your E lands if placed correctly. You can also use your E to get vision in a brush instead of face checking, which is a nice tip that can save your life in a close game. And finally, Volley Bear's ultimate is called Stormbringer. Volley Bear leaps to a target location, slowing and damaging enemies beneath him, gaining health and attack range. In short, you turn into an absolute killing machine for a couple seconds. Enemy towers in his landing location will also be disabled for a couple seconds, allowing you to easily tower dive after level 6. This ability is extremely powerful, but does have a very long cooldown, so it's crucial that you get good value when you do use it. When Volley Bear is leaping, he is also immune to CC. This can be used to outplay important crowd control abilities if timed correctly. Nothing is more tilting than getting your Blitz Crank Hook negated by Volley's ult. Skill Order If invading early on Volley Bear, starting E can be a viable option to get a long range AoE slow. If not, W level 1, E level 2, and Q level 3 is the standard level order. There are two main ability max options. First off and most common is W max into Q into E. This is the standard since W is your main DPS and sustain tool. It also improves your clear speed. I also wanted to mention the Q max build that is usually ran in order to make as many plays as possible early on. You're trading off the clear speed and sustain for a better gap closer to gank and chase down targets. Although less popular, I've seen some high challengers running this with success in games where the extra mobility is needed. Runes. Next up, let's talk about the best rune setups for Volley in Season 11. There are a couple different keystone options, so let's start off with the most common. Press the attack is by far the most used and consistent keystone being run in every elo. The reason press the attack is so strong is because of your Q and W auto attack animation cancels allowing you to proc it almost instantly. This allows you to become a seriously dangerous 1v1 duelist. 
Conquer is also viable into team comps with a ton of tanks and bruisers. This also provides you with more scaling, but keep in mind that this is much weaker in burst trades or ganks. To close out the precision tree, Triumph is pretty much a no-brainer since none of the other options really do anything. Legend Alacrity and Tenacity are also interchangeable depending on if you need the Tenacity or not. Alacrity is best since it'll make you stronger in duels while also increasing your clear speed. Lastly, by far my favorite option is Last Stand which allows you to turn fights once you're low on HP with your W heals. Coup de Gras is also viable, but in my opinion, it's just not as good. For secondary, by far the most common is the Sorcery Tree with either Nimbus Cloak in Water Walking or Celerity in Water Walking. Both options are viable and very strong, so it really just depends on your preference. I do really like Nimbus Cloak if you need that little burst of movement speed to catch up to your target. Celerity gives you overall more movement speed, especially in combination with Turbo Chem Tank, if that's what you're running. Another cool page that I see some high elo volley bears running is Predator. Your secondary will stay the same with the Sorcery Tree, but your main page will change volley bears playstyle quite a bit. Cheap Shot and Eyeball Collection are a no-brainer to help with burst damage, especially in the early game. To close out the Domination page, either Relentless Hunter or Ingenious Hunter are the go-tos. Relentless Hunter allows you to pull off ganks and move around the map quicker. Ingenious Hunter is pretty strong since it not only lowers your Predator cooldown, but also your Turbo Chem Tank if that's your Mythic of choice. The last rune setup, although less popular, is Phase Rush. This setup is useful in scenarios that you don't think you need the extra damage, and you're looking to be more mobile within fights. The setup is more situational, but can help out against mobile teams with a lot of slows. For your secondary page, either Precision or Domination is the way to go. It's really up to your preference, so make sure to test out both options for yourself. Attack Speed, Adaptive Force, and either Armor and Magic Resist is what you want to be running. Armor versus AD junglers, and Magic Resist versus AP junglers. Items. Now that you have the main rune pages for Volley, let's discuss his item builds and in which situation you should choose each item. First off, Blue Smite or Red Smite. Blue Smite is by far the most picked since Volley Bear does sometimes struggle with gap closing on enemies. Blue Smite plus Nimbus Cloak can help you close the distance to Q and lock down your target. Red Smite is also a viable option if you're going into dueling junglers such as Xin Zhao or Olaf. Since these matchups are usually just a melee brawl, the damage reduction and true damage from Red Smite is much more useful in fights to the death. Next up, let's discuss Volley Bear's mythic options. Most popular by far, is Turbo Chem Tank. This goes without saying since this item has been such a menace this season. It helps Volley with his biggest weakness, gap closing. If the enemy team is mobile, Turbo Chem Tank is usually just the go-to. Although I do think that people build Chem Tank too much, it's still his most consistent mythic by far. Next up in my personal favorite, Frostfire Gauntlet. This is an item that actually has great value when up against a heavy melee team comp. The utility this brings in teamfights makes you almost impossible to escape from. While Turbo Chem Tank gives you a massive burst of movement speed, Frostfire's slowing field makes you extremely sticky once you lock onto a target. Sunfire Aegis is an option that is more expensive, but will make you extremely tanky, plus less vulnerable to CC. I do not usually recommend this unless you're into a team comp completely filled with crowd control and you get far ahead. If you're looking to build damage, Triforce and Divine Sunder can be solid options as well. Triforce gives you an insane amount of damage that can be good if you get extremely fed into team comps that don't have a lot of lockdown. Divine Sunder is very similar, but is the better option into tankier teams. If you are a newer Volley Bear player, I usually recommend sticking to Chem Tank or Frostfire though, since they give you much more room to make mistakes without getting one shot. For Boots, Ionian Boots of Lucidity are the most common not only because the Ability Haste is great on Volley, but they're also extremely cheap, which allows you to rush your other items faster. If you have extra cash and need tenacity, Merc Treads are the way to go. If you're against a team comp with heavy AD and auto attackers, Plated Steel Caps are a great choice as well. For Legendaries, Volley Bear has quite some diversity to close out his build. Since there are so many options, I decided to break them up into different categories. Tank items. Dead Man's Plate for armor and move speed. Force of Nature for magic resist and move speed. Randuin's Omen for anti-crit. 
Thorn Mail for healing reduction and armor, Spirit Visage for magic resist with some extra shielding and healing, Knight's Vow to help the team when you're behind, and Gargoyle Stone Plate for a massive anti-burst shield. Bruiser Items Sterax Gauge for an anti-burst shield, Titanic Hydra for AoE cleave damage, Death's Dance for anti-burst and armor, GA for an extra life in a crucial teamfight, Wit's End for on-hit damage and magic resist, and Black Cleaver for ability haste and move speed. Before we close out the item section, I wanted to mention AP Volley. Items like Zhonya's and Nasher's Tooth can be good pickups if your team is lacking AP damage. Always make sure to keep this in mind, especially if you're against multiple squishies. Your E scales with AP and does a surprising amount of burst. Here are some example full builds. Keep in mind that there's no one set build, a good Volibear player will always change up his item choices depending on the game. Jungle Clears Before we hop into the jungle routes that best suit Volley, let's quickly go over some general Volibear tips to improve your jungle efficiency and ganking. When clearing, it's extremely important to make use of the animation cancels from both your Q and W. When executed properly, this will greatly decrease the time it takes for you to clear camps. While on the topic of clear speeds, it's also important to keep your passive stacks up when possible. If you can keep your passive maxed out at all times, it'll save you the time it takes to build it up to max. Although it's not a huge deal, these small things make a big difference in a full game. When ganking, the toughest thing to pull off consistently is Volibear's E. If you can start off behind the enemy, it's usually best to hold your E until they use a dash or flash before placing it in front of their path. If placed correctly, you can force the enemy to either walk back into you to dodge it or to eat the damage and slow. In the early game, always remember that Volibear is an absolute monster. Keep an eye out for early plays. If you're running Pressy Attack, look for angles to chunk out weak early game junglers such as Evelyn. Since you do get outscaled by some farming junglers, make sure to pressure hard with your early game power. When you hit level 6, make sure to already have a plan of what you're going to do with your ult. Looking for tower dives can be a great way to completely put one of the enemy laners out of the game and will greatly increase your chances of winning. In later game fights, remember that you mostly become an engage for your team or peel bot. You're no longer the carry and your main job is to make sure your carries are able to put out as much damage as they can while you're soaking up damage on the front line. 5 camp clear into scuttle. This is the most standard volleybear path that can pretty much work in every game. You can start on either side of the map and clear 5 camps to be on time for scuttle spawn at 3.15. Since Volibear has such strong dueling potential, it's important that you're at the scuttle on time in case that a fight breaks out. If there are no ganks to be had after scuttle is taken, you can either recall or finish off your 6th camp before going back. Always keep in mind that Volibear thrives at this stage of the game, so always be looking to invade or push the enemy out of their jungle to get yourself a lead. 3 camp gank path. This path involves starting red or blue buff, taking your other buff plus gromp, and instantly looking for a gank. It's important to look at your lane matchups and minion wave states before committing too hard to this path. It's much easier to pull this off with laners who have gank assist, so make sure to evaluate this in champ select. To close out the jungle clear section, I just wanted to mention that Volibear has a very weak level 2, so be wary. Since your Q will only be leveled at 3, you're extremely easy to kite away from. Champions like Graves have a very easy time bullying you at level 2, so always keep this in mind in the early stages. Weaknesses Let's talk about Volibear's biggest strengths and weaknesses. Knowing what makes the champion strong and in what areas he's weak can make a huge difference if you're trying to consistently climb on Volibear. Volibear's biggest weakness is how he can get easily zoned off and kited against very mobile and long range team comps. Turbo Chem Tank is a tool that really helps him deal with this weakness since it gives you a massive burst of move speed to catch up to enemies with mobility tools. To shore up this weakness, it's very important to track enemies flash timers and look out for when enemies burn important cooldowns such as Ezreal E. To add on to this, Volibear does also start to fall off in the later stages of the game since enemies with 3-4 items can start shredding you much faster. A good Volibear player will understand this and start to act more as an engage or peel for the team. 
I see too many low elo volleyball players burning all their cooldowns over committing and getting one shot, trying to dive in and 1v9ing a fight. In reality, your goal should be to soak damage and create space for your own carries in the later game fights. Lastly, volleyball is not the fastest clearer and can get heavily outpaced by some of the extremely fast farming junglers. Understanding this is very important since your goal is to affect the map as much as possible while the other jungler is power farming. You do not want to farm alongside a Karthus or Udyr and expect to have an impact in the game. Strengths Let's discuss Volibear's biggest strengths and why he's such a strong pick in the jungle. Yes, Volibear is not the fastest farming jungler. The thing is, Volibear's ganking and dueling presence really does make up for that. In the early to mid game, Volibear can literally build full tank and still one shot squishies. His dueling power is insanely strong and in the right hands can easily push these farming champions out of their jungle or just straight up kill them. This leads me into his next strength, Volibear's extremely strong objective control. With your W, you pretty much take no damage from any objectives, allowing you to control them very early on in the game. If you can put yourself in a strong position early, this allows you to stack up early dragons and rift heralds to start snowballing the game in your team's favor. Always remember that the later the game goes, the weaker you become, so it's important to get on top of these objectives and control them for your team. Volibear is also amazing at tower diving post 6, which is one of my personal favorite things about his kit. The best feeling is when you slam down their bot lane under tower and you see the jungle diff typed in all chat. To close out, Volibear's flexible build path allows him to adapt to a ton of different situations if you're familiar with the best item combinations. He can build full tank, bruiser, duelist, or even AP. Learning the best item combinations comes with time, but having this knowledge in your arsenal can be a huge difference maker to increase your win rate on the climb. That will do it for my in-depth guide on Volibear Jungle. If you stayed to the end and have any questions or opinions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. If you did enjoy, it helps me out so much if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with my posts. I try my best to post high quality educational league content and I'll be cranking out more in-depth guides just like this one every week on Wednesday. If you're interested in joining the community of like-minded players looking to improve, be sure to join the Moose Den Discord. The link will be in the description. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Until the next video, peace out.